This video is protected by fair use. It is not for profit. It is for the purposes of criticism, commentary, and teaching and research. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept of moksha. This is a Sanskrit word which literally means the freedom or liberation from the cycle of death and rebirth. And I'm going to discuss real, real briefly about the history of this term, where it came from, and then I'm going to go into the remote viewing data that was obtained when four different viewers looked at this topic blind. And the amount of corroborating data between the spread of work was very, very high, and then some of the new information that came in through the remote viewing data that caught all of us after we had uh, completed this project and we did analysis and we saw what the actual target was. There's some very startling information that came out across the board on all the work. So I want to do uh, a presentation of the work. I want to talk about what was obtained and then uh, just my thoughts on it after the fact. So the concept of Moksha originated in the first millennium BC and it began along the Ganges River in India is where its origins. The Sanskrit word is, it may have gone much, much further back than that, but it's the first recorded instance that we have of it. And it plays a significant role in a number of Eastern religions. It's a fundamental aspect of Buddhism, Hinduism, as well as Jainism. Uh, Buddhists believe that this freedom or this liberation from reincarnation, being born again and again, exists once you deny the existence of the permanent self and attain nirvana. Uh, okay, I have to break in here and I have to follow the rules of fair use, especially if this video is copyrighted. I'm not sure if it is or not, to be honest, but it's an older video, sorry, video, so excuse the video quality. The sound quality is pretty good though, so it's a very interesting topic. A few people on my channel wanted me to cover this. Somebody told me about it, I think repeatedly, and I have had it on my list. I bookmarked and I've had this tab open and I have not watched the video, so this is going to be fresh, but I could tell that it was worth covering. Um, I could just tell by watching the first like two minutes or so. I didn't have to watch the whole 43 minutes. I knew it was going to be worth covering. I knew it was something that was good. Um, it's hard to find. So the person that found it, it kind of is like, I think the guy that made it uh, removed it, but other people uploaded it on, vid on, uh, on a video on YouTube and some other platforms maybe, but it is kind of difficult to find. It is kind of, it, it, well, it is really interesting. I think it's going to turn out to be really interesting. It's not all about religion, so don't worry. It goes into remote viewing and it gets really interesting. Um, I could tell by just from some comments that I had read here and other places. That's actually a familiar face. I've seen him on my channel, Tom S. Unfortunately, I think I've seen him on some really shitty channels like Perpetual Perv, maybe, and other places. But uh, some of these people would be cool to some do not look familiar to me. And it would be good if they came on over to the Sanity Machine for more content like this and more analysis because this is a video describing it, but obviously we're going a step beyond that in a sense. You could look at it that way. You don't have to. But when I analyze something, I'm not just reporting, I'm giving my own take, my own analysis, and putting my mind to it, and uh, trying to put some more pieces together of the puzzle so that we have a bigger picture and we can see a little bit more clearly what's going on here. And uh, hopefully it will help us one day okay, in the future, and getting out of here. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm not just covering stuff all the time that's interesting. I mean, I could cover ancient history and make a channel just doing hours and hours and hours of that stuff, 
but is it going to help me or others get out of here? No, it isn't. I hate to say that. It's kind of interesting covering, looking at giants and all that stuff and mountains and the tree stumps that are, you know, the ancient trees that could be tree stumps and all that sort of stuff. I've looked into tons and tons of stuff like that. The megalithic structures, the walls, the, you know, the glyphs, uh, all sorts of things, man. All Atlantis, you name it. I've looked into that stuff for decades, but is it going to help you get out of here? If that's your goal, then you're on the right channel. state of nothingness. You realize that reality is an illusion, a web or an illusion. And once you clear that fog and you see through it, you'll know. I'm going to rewind that a bit just in case. I want to make sure the sound is good. I can't tell when I click record whether it is or not. Um, sorry if there's sound issues, I'm doing my best, and I don't know what's wrong sometimes, but it happens, so. You realize that reality is an illusion, a web or an illusion, and once you clear that fog and you see through it, you'll no longer exist and then thus be free of it. Hindus and uh, Jainism those practice Jainism have a slightly different view. Uh, Hindus believe that you're born again and again through various lives because of your acts and the karma that you accrue based on those acts. So if you live a good life, you generate and accrue good karma. If you have a life that is filled with thievery and crime and evil acts, you accrue bad karma. And that it's until you're able to eradicate the bad karma, you're going to be stuck here until you do so. And the ways you do that could be through meditative techniques, uh, increased enlightenment and knowledge. Um, there's, there's various, there's a number of different groups that have varying degrees and different opinions about how it's actually done. Uh, but the overall agreement is that good karma, once you have enough of that, it outweighs the bad karma and then you'll be free. Uh, and you finally have achieved moksha. Jainism is very similar to Hinduism in that they believe that you do need to get rid of bad karma to achieve moksha. They take it a step further though, and they believe that you need to get rid of and actually absolve good karma as well. And they have various prescriptions on how to do that. But that is, again, it's that you have to get rid of all karma, the good and the bad, is where Jainism uh, falls in kind of the spectrum. Early Christians believed in reincarnation as well. Uh, Basilides of Alexandria, an early Christian teacher, um, around 140 to 160 AD, uh, he taught that as an explanation, essentially, of why pious individuals who had a good life, who never sinned, who were really, really good, um, why they might be stricken with such immense poverty or sickness or whatever it is in their life that didn't seem fair or right. And uh, they, they used the explanation that it was because of their previous lives that they had lived. That's why they were being punished in this life and they had to make up for it in this life. So somewhat similar to the Eastern religion. I have to jump in here, especially for anyone that is new to my channel. I don't believe in karma. I don't buy it at all, not whatsoever. It's nonsense, it makes no sense, it doesn't add up. It's like two plus two equals pineapple, you know, uh, shaped like Chrissy Sedaris's head. I mean, it just doesn't add up, man. It makes no sense whatsoever because you can't remember the wrong that you did in your past lives, so you can't correct it. Your memory wiped, your mind wiped. So it makes absolutely no sense, but it's a trap. It's something they set up, whether you wanna say, quote, God set it up, Lucifer, the devil, archons, whatever. I don't, I don't even care what term you use, demons, doesn't matter. But it's a setup, basically, so that when you pass away one day, they can always say, you didn't do good enough, you got to go back. And they can do that endlessly, because you'll never be perfect. So they can keep you here forever and mind wipe you again and again and again. So you, if you fall into the trap that thinking, oh, I'm not good enough, you're doomed. You, you know, you failed. Um, you're doomed to fail and there's no way to get out at that point. If you have that mindset and you believe in karma, it's an absolute failure. 
as a strategy, complete failure. So if you buy that, you really have to think deeply about it. Say to yourself, how can I correct something? How can I be blamed for something from past lives when I'd be mind wiped? And how could I correct it in this lifetime when I don't know what I've done my past lifetime or my past 200 lifetimes or 3,000 lifetimes or 33,000 lifetimes, you could say. Yes, I did throw in that 33 on purpose. And it does filter out the, the paranoid idiots that will immediately leave comments on that. They'll pause the video and they'll start commenting and saying, I knew it, I knew it. I mean, they're, they're scared of numbers. Can you imagine being that much of a slave to evil, that evil can make you fear a number? <laughs> if you're afraid of a number, man, what's, what chance do you have against real evil when you get out of here? You better drop that fucking fear of numbers and words and magic and stuff like that and stop fearing the things that they, you know, have gotten you to fear. Don't be afraid of that shit, okay? Don't be afraid. So anyway, uh, karma is complete bullshit. I'm going to move forward because this is going to probably end up being a very long video if I keep giving this much uh, commentary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I'm going to move forward here. Religion early on, but uh, the Catholic Church ultimately struck that out. There are a couple of different councils that were assembled, and they decided they didn't. It would it was too controversial because it uh, it flew in the face of the uh, sanctity of the crucifixion, and that it, it it they didn't like that concept, so they got rid of it. Where remote viewers come in is we took this project. I was one of the remote viewers who worked the project blind. Uh, there were three other remote viewers who also did the same. And by blind, all I really simply mean is that I, when I ran the actual project, I did not know what the target was. So there's a project manager who sends out to the different viewers just a randomly generated number. They set it up in a certain way so that they assign this concept of Moksha with that number. And then when we sit down to do the remote viewing work, our unconscious mind has no problem tracing that number back to the associated project, which is Moksha. So it's a way that allows me as a viewer and any other viewer when operating blind to, since I don't know what it is on remote viewing, all my biases or information that I might have read about or books about the topic, uh, it keeps it all out because I have no idea what I could be remote viewing. I don't know who exactly what agency was working for with remote viewing. Unless I missed it there and tuned out for a second, I don't know, but um, what was I going to say? I, I had, like, it's hard to remember everything that I want to say and then cram it all in, but the military does recruit remote review, remote viewers, and they also program and create remote viewers. They're capable of that, okay? They're capable of creating people to be remote viewers. I'm not talking about in the womb. They could be. I, I don't know for sure, but I... I know that beyond that, they take children and, uh, and young adults and basically create them, in a sense, for that role with that ability. You could say they're trained to do that, or you could say they're created, programmed to do that. And it's like they're tools for the military. So it's a way of kind of taking a step back and keeping the data a little bit more clean as opposed to writing something front loaded. Uh, and so it's, it's one of the fairly standard remote viewing protocols uh, is that you really want to run projects blind whenever you can uh, to kind of secure the integrity of the information. It also makes it all the more fascinating when very, very specific information relevant to the topic comes out of the work because the viewers had no idea what they were remote viewing, but when the viewers get back this concept of reincarnation in their work directly in a blind session, well, you know that you're on topic and you're on target. I'm gonna go a bit over the information. I'm gonna start from the top. I'm gonna to start from describing what the viewers, this is referred to as a group summary. So I'm taking the work that is uh, agreed upon across the session work for the most part, and then describing first the site was the first information that we get 
when describing moksha. And then there's a couple, there's a lot of context that came in through this project. And it's once I start getting into the information, it all makes sense because it's a very complex issue. It's not something simply straightforward, which is what uh, the religious beliefs have I suppose perpetuated in the past but uh, so first I'm going to go over the site and then I'm going to provide answers to a couple of the contextual questions that were answered through the work that really surprised us as viewers after the fact and it's information you know this is the type of thing when we're talking about reincarnation in general most people tend to have a hard time believing that to begin with uh, but if this if, if the concept of reincarnation was difficult for you to kind of stomach this information will be far more difficult to stomach because it's it's so unsettling some of this information is a little unsettling and there's there's a sense of no that couldn't be it, far out there it's far stretched and i think if this information wasn't attained by remote viewing by me personally done blind done in a very uh rigorous manner using a structured remote viewing technique if multiple viewers hadn't come up with the same information describing the same mechanics, the same groups that are responsible, uh, it would probably be even difficult for me to believe. And this is why, you know, when remote viewers go back, they're going directly to the source. They're going directly to the underlying patterns of information that we, th we believe make up this database or this matrix that informs physical reality. Okay, so I do have to jump in here because I do have to give my commentary and break it up. I can't just keep going for too long. I have to play by the rules of fair use. But I wanted to jump in and say there are a lot of military black projects. There's DARPA projects. There's Air Force and Navy intelligence projects. Uh, as you know, the military was involved in, still is, mind control MK Ultra. They have experiments on time travel, uh, manipulation of time, manipulation of time, uh, space time, you name it, uh, CERN experiment. They're into all kinds of weird shit, man. Psy projects, psychic abilities. They, they want to understand the nature of reality. They, uh, they have looked into astral projection, um, near-death experiences, the military is, and military intelligence is into a lot of things that the general public doesn't even, wouldn't even imagine. They just think, oh, military, it's for war, it's for, you know, battleships and aircraft carriers and uh, jet fighter planes, bombers, tanks. It, it's so far beyond that, what they're actually doing and what they've been into for many decades, longer than I've been alive, you know, much longer than I've been alive. And as I've said many times, I'm not young. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm over 30 years old. If you can believe it, I'm. I'm not. The, I'm not young. You know, I'm over 30. That's old these days. Over 30. Can you believe it? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to carry on here. It does get interesting. I'm pretty sure it does. I haven't watched it, but I think this guy took the video down at a certain point. His video, and then he just didn't want to talk about it anymore or something. But thankfully, people had saved it and. Uh, shared it so we're able to view it that we th we believe make up this database or this matrix that informs physical reality and so there's no third party at least that we're aware of by accessing remote viewing data it's just just the facts and so if it wasn't the story's pretty out there it's pretty out there but uh you know, just take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, use your own discernment in this. And, uh, you know, the purpose of this video, the purpose of this YouTube channel, and uh, the content that I'm producing is really just to share the information so that you can make your own mind up. So to begin with, I'm going to start with a description of the site, which is essentially what is around surrounding the target before we jump down into specifics and uh, then also the contextual data that answers a number of different questions about Mokshaw. When we originally described this site, it's a fence or a grid around a place. This acts as a barrier. It collects and traps people, things, or objects. This is actually an innocent planet 
that is being used in an unintended way. And this meters the flow and acts as a checkpoint and an access point for an external force. Uh, one viewer described it as similar to Hocus Pocus in, in a way of its, its energetics that the viewer wasn't familiar with. And it's occurring on a crowded planet. It's a deliberate function that acts as a cage. People have been dispersed here, and a form of perverted injustice is occurring. A third viewer described it as a large naturally formed object, like a planet, that acts as an animal pen. This is a refugee camp tucked away out of sight, and a magnetic force. It stirs, agitates, and it works in a cylindrical manner, like clockwork over a long expanse of time. Uh, in my session, my work described a planetary system that's extremely crowded and jammed. Ghostly vo voices are flooding into this place, and it's incredibly harrowing for them. Uh, it's a bone-chilling experience. Uh, as a viewer, when I remote viewed this, I had descriptions that it made me upset in the session. It elicited contempt for what was going on at the site. But uh, the activity at the site was this concept of a net that's been spun, and it's an operation of catch and release on a grand scale. So there's a massive grid that exists around this planet, and it acts as a checkpoint, a waypoint or a rest stop where souls are drained, and then that in turn energizes something else. So very, very specific. Okay, souls are drained, that energizes something else. If you can get behind him, be, sorry, if you can get beyond him saying that this is a quote planet, and the image and the globe shaped image and all that stuff. Okay. Specific information about souls, about the clockwork nature over a long expanse of time, as well as this collecting, trapping, and then re-releasing. All this information came in, okay, what's going on locally here? And the fact that it's the entire planet. The process works is that Earth is shielded by a companion object. And we're not sure if this is a physical thing. I mean, we're dealing with a type, if this is a technology, it's a type of technology that's so far beyond which humans can even probably comprehend, it may as well be magic. I mean, it makes sense why one viewer probably uses this word, <laughs> hocus pocus. It's so far beyond his own lexicon that it may as well be magic. So whether this is a physical object or not, we're really not entirely certain. It would make sense that it's not physical, but you know, you can make a couple of different, I suppose, educated guesses. Maybe it exists in a phased state a different dimension, uh, where this object is, this companion object that creates this net, uh, we're really not quite sure, but it's most likely because we don't have the vocabulary or the comprehension to even understand how it exists in this state. But so we're going to use words that we can. So I want to jump in here just quickly again. There will be people that will say, well, the technology is so far behind us, so we're doomed. There's no point. There's no escape. They'll get fatalistic, they'll get black pill, they'll get doomer, whatever way you want it, whatever you want to describe it as being, all right? I'm not like that, okay? I've tried to express that many times in, I don't know how many videos so far on my channel, probably hundreds, all right? Look at it this way. I don't have to understand everything about a computer. Let's say you put a very high technology computer that's way, let's say it's way more advanced than my laptop, way more, centuries ahead, let's say. I don't have to understand it to take, to be able to hypothetically, let's say, take a sledgehammer to it and destroy it and end it. You get what I'm saying? I don't have to be able to re, re uh, sorry, reverse engineer it, take it apart, put it back together, understand all the circuitry, everything about it, right? I don't have to to be able to destroy it. So, so then now are you starting to see? Oh, so we don't have to exactly understand the intimate workings of it and understand how it all works to a T to be able to fucking dismantle it, right? You get what I mean? Just like a, if it's a high-tech Android, you can destroy that thing without understanding how to build it yourself. It's actually easier to destroy 
than to build something from scratch like that. So they may very well have a high-tech grid or net around this realm that we're in, right? Does that mean that we can't take it down or destroy it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. So I don't want people going off on this tangent and losing hope and despairing and also trying to convince others to give up. When I see that shit, I really don't like seeing that at all. Especially when you're trying to convince others, just give it up, we don't have any chance. You're wrong, okay? I'll never give up. If I have to fight for fucking eternity for freedom, I'll never give up. Maybe you've resigned yourself to this realm or to being a slave, but I don't even want to be around you at that point. I wish you well. I hope you snap out of it. If you're depressed or whatever, I hope you get beyond it, uh, whatever the case may be. But if you've just given up hope, I really don't want you around me to be honest. I got to be honest. I don't. I don't because I'm going to end this place. You know, even if you're hanging onto my ankles saying, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. No offense, but I'll kick you in the face if I have to. And I'll get you off my ankles and I'll lose you trying to drag me down and I'll keep going. That's the way I am. You got that? That's the way I am. So yes, I do think that this has to be destroyed, has to be ended, and that's the moral thing to do. Whether you have to ponder that for hours, weeks, months, some people have come to my channel right away and said, how dare you say you're going to end this place? You're going to stop this beautiful place, this beautiful realm, from, and take it away from others, and you're infringing on their free will to enjoy this reality or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to do what I think is the, the, the moral thing to do in this situation, is to end this fucking matrix. That's what I'm going to do. And you don't know how much thought I put into that. I can't even say some of my thoughts or plans on YouTube or I'd lose my channel. You know, I've already, I've already been walking the line on some of that stuff. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward here. But uh, yes, I am passionate about this. And I'm not saying I'm the most passionate, but I'm up there, I would say. I would probably say I'm probably up there in terms of wanting to end this matrix and not letting anyone stop me, the naysayers or... It's not going to work. Whether they're demons or whether they're just depressed people that have given up, it's not going to work. If anything, you're just motivating me even more, making me see that, yes, this has to be done. Has to be done. can understand the mechanical aspect of it, the energetic aspect of it, the acting like in that, things like that. Sure, but it's most likely because we don't have vocabulary or the comprehension to even understand how it exists in this state. But so we're going to use words that we can understand the mechanical aspect of it, the energetic aspect of it, the acting like in that, things like that. First viewer said it's a companion object to Earth. Uh, it's something that's powerful and magnetic and it squeezes tightly around the globe. Another viewer describes it as a magnetic vice that is attached around a large place. It's a mechanical process that incorporates destructive chemicals and an individual undergoes bombardment as they pass through this system. And the people that pass through, they feel lost. They don't have an understanding of what's going on, kind of associated with the losing of memories, if it makes sense. Uh, but they're, they have this desire that seems to remain consistent uh, through them, as even though they, through this feeling of lost. More work describes that it's a little bit more specific. It actually gets the information point that these are souls that are being bent back towards the planet and uh, that the information, that the closest analogy was kind of like gravitational lensing, where if your soul is light, instead of kind of shooting off after you die off the planet, off to somewhere else in the universe, what's occurring is there's a artificial structure that is lensing or curving your light back down to earth again. And then every time this occurs, it's constantly lensed or pulled back. It shows this is an activity is powering a massive rotating object 
that visually appears like an axle in space. It's fluctuating and absorbing energy that's created by this lensing effect. So the act of actually creating the lensing, of sending the light, the light soul back to Earth, generates energy inside of this large structure. And uh, it seems to be, I mean, there's chemicals that seem to be involved, at least that's a vocabulary to describe what's going on. Uh, something's being bombarded, there's a destructive process, which I'll get into a little bit further in the work, but uh, there's actually a, a fracturing that occurs to force this light, this soul, to kind of come back down to the planet again for a second, third, infinite amount of times. But ultimately that's powering something else. Before we move on here, I want to address this one more time. Uh, when he talks about the globe, planet, all that stuff, I'm aware people are going to say, well, if he's a real remote viewer, he wouldn't be seeing this realm as a globe, spinning globe, a planet, all that stuff. I'm aware of that. Okay, I'm aware of that. They may have some truth, and of course they have some things wrong, but they could be under the influence of entities, under the influence of whatever, to see it as a, quote, globe or spinning ball, when I don't believe that this realm is that at all, at all. I know it's stationary, okay, and uh, yeah, so we're on some kind of a realm, it's not a globe, it's not a spinning ball, it's not a spinning, wobbling, flying ball going through, quote, space, outer space, but uh, they could have been influenced by some entities to see that, in a sense, mind control, influence, whatever you want to call it, um, but that doesn't mean that they didn't see some partial truth. That's what I'm interested in. Sometimes you have to parse through the shit like this to see, oh, do they have something though? Did they come up with at least a gem or two or three of truth? You know? Possibility. So I'm looking at this uh, that way. So the second contextual part of the information that is described is, well, what is being done to the reincarnating souls? There's a fracturing that is occurring. So the mind, the remote viewing data specifically stated that the mind and body of a person is splayed and fractured. It's rendering them very confused and upset about their predicament. Something is being extracted and taken from them without them being conscientious of the occurrence. The analogy that was used in the work is that of bees in a box or like a harvest of honey from bees and that there's a honeycombing, this is the kind of the trapping within the mesh that's occurring that's going on and then there's a third party that comes in, extracts honey out of this box, this bee box, takes it for some other purpose and then puts the bees back into the box and then that's, the, that's a very close analogy that uh, matches what is going on here with souls. Another viewer described it as harvesting. There's a harvest that occurs when uh, uh, a soul goes up and then is refracted back down. More of the remote viewing work describes that there is, the whole circumstance itself is referred to as toxic. The number of souls, the amount of individuals that are reincarnating on this wheel is that that creates an instability that is required for this alchemical process is that without this volatile planet, without volatile souls, without creating this certain type of scenario where something's taken and you're thrown back and you have no memory, it wouldn't produce what is desired by this third party. The crowded state of Earth and the number of souls here is required to create an optimal environment to extract what's desired. The confusion and anger caused by the confinement feeds into this process. And an aspect of the individual's mind or their soul, the intelligence itself, again, it's using our language, may not be literal, it may be more. Sorry to jump in again. I do have to break it up though anyways, but I wanted to say something. Um, somebody asked me a question in a comment a little while ago on my channel, asking me, well, how can the population be growing of Earth? If it's a recycling soul trap system, if they're just recycling, reincarnating, if that if reincarnation is incurring and it's like a recycling, how can the population grow? There's there's quite a few possible 
explanations for that. Um, they could be creating, obviously, quote, people or beings that look like people, but they're not like us. They could be artificial in some way and increasing the population that way. There's another distinct possibility that that this isn't just a closed system where everyone who passes away goes you know, out of body, leaves the body here, and then gets recycled back and that the number just stays the same, but they're drawing in souls from other systems, other realms, um, other universes, you might say, multiverse, other dimensions, whatever. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Coming here from other places. Uh, it's Places isn't really the right word for it. It could be dimensions, but somewhere else, we'll say. We'll leave it that. I'll, I'll tr try to leave it open that way and, and be vague on purpose in a sense, but you get what I mean? Like coming here from other, somewhere else, outside of this matrix earth realm. So then they're getting more and more, so more are going to be coming in than just are getting recycled, so that's going to increase the numbers over time. And maybe in the last 100 to 200 years, they got a real good source, maybe, possibly. Uh, they found another way to draw in more uh, moss to the flame, in a sense. Put out some good bait. Who knows? There's possibilities like that, though. What I'm saying is, it may not just be a closed system. Uh, the population or the amount here could be legitimately increased to a certain extent. That isn't ruling out that they're creating fakes of some sort. Okay? Uh, I don't want to use the MPC thing. That has been overused and misused by the, quote, truther community to, to the point that it's just disgusting. They call me an NPC. They call anybody they don't like an NPC and an AI and everything else. And uh, with thinking beings that are truth seekers, their credibility should be flying right out the fucking window into the sewer at that point. But unfortunately, with the state of things on YouTube and the, quote, truth community these days, it isn't happening. People don't say, oh, you lost all credibility because you're calling this guy that's obviously not an NPC an NPC, and he's obviously not an AR, an AI, sorry. He makes artwork, he, he writes poetry, he's very creative, he does all these different things, he has a sense of humor, comedy, he does all these things that show, you know, that I'm not that. But anyway, uh, I don't want to get way off track here. I'm just saying, I, I tossed out a couple possible, like possibilities, possible explanations there for how the population here could be increasing, and it's not just a closed recycling system, not just a closed system. They're bringing in, I might, I, I do think I'm here from somewhere else. This is not my home, so I don't know how I got here, but I think they're drawing in souls from other realms or other dimensions or other somethings that maybe we don't even have the language for it to describe it. So maybe that's how it's growing here. Mind or their soul, the intelligence itself, again, it's using our language, may not be literal, it may be more metaphorical, but is that the intelligence or the mind of the soul is being fed on by an external parasitic force. And... Uh, there are drawings of this in the remote viewing work that may be more metaphorical, but is that the intelligence or the mind of the soul is being fed on by an external parasitic force. And uh, there are drawings of this in the remote viewing work that were not particularly pleasant. They're very, they're slightly grotesque. And when the descriptions of this uh, type of thing that was doing this process, uh, uh, it, it was, that were used to associate as it was something that's warped, sadistic and twisted, that's actually doing this process. Warped, sadistic and twisted. I've described the quote, God, the monster of this realm that people pray to and worship as being that. And I want to address something else before I forget.
people have asked, well, what about abortion, Stephen? Why would the system here promote abortion if they want this population to increase? Doesn't more people here, more beings here equal more louche? Or what about the trauma aspect where they're being aborted in the womb? That's traumatic, okay, for someone that innocent. Maybe that's possibly never been here before. Might be their first lifetime and they get aborted. Look into abortion. I can't describe what it is on YouTube or I'll get banned. What it actually involves happening to that innocent being before they've ever taken their first breath. So they get the trauma, they get the energy, they get the loose, whatever you want to call it. They feed off of that. And chances are they're going to get that being, that soul that has been aborted back here again anyways. So they can do these by the millions and feed and feed and feed and feed off that. You get what I'm saying? They get an energy from each one. So the people that say, well, hey, why would they promote abortion? Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of Lush? Not at all. Because once they go to, quote, the other side, the other side, after they're aborted, they're in, their, they're in the astral realm and they just get sent back here into a body anyway. They end up here anyway. It's not a loss where you know, to the soul, to the body of that being, and, and there's tremendous trauma, yes, and uh, that creates louche for them, if you want to call it louche. So there's an explanation for that, and I'm not just trying to explain this stuff away. I really do think about this stuff, and what they could really be doing here, and uh, it has to end. We have to end this shit, okay? And Team Evil is going to fight us every step of the way. I already know that. I'm sure you can see that they're fighting me. They're trying to take down every damn video that I upload, by the way. Everything. They're after me like you wouldn't believe. Because they want to silence me. So why do you think that is? Like, I mean, some people here know they don't need to me to justify. But yeah, I'm speaking a lot of truth here. That's why they want to censor me and shut my channel down. Because they're afraid of the sanity machine. Literally afraid. And I mean that literally. They know that we're doing some real damage here. The third contextual information that was reached through this project is the answer to how did this come about? And how did, how did this scenario even begin in the first place? How was it allowed, you think of, if, you know, say there are forces that are beyond the planet that have the ability to affect what's going on here, how could they have let this happen? How unjust is the universe, or is it all just unjust? Uh, and the information was in the remote viewing data that hinted at and described what actually occurred that allowed this to uh, manifest. What is described is that historically in the past is that the planet was viewed with extreme envy by an external force and that there existed a time here where reincarnation did not exist where there was life here but when these individuals or when life forms died here they weren't trapped here they were able to leave but the planet itself was viewed with a significant amount of envy by this outside force and what occurred, we simply describe as, as a massive war. There were very low, there was massive explosions. There was a huge force that was met with resistance in this particular place in the universe. And the fate of a planet was decided. Ideas of destiny, a massive war that occurred place, battle scars on the surface of the earth, things like that. But ultimately, it came to a conclusion. The period of time or the expanse of time were really uncertain of as far as what the remote viewing data is. I'm going to jump in here again. I do think a massive war is coming, not here in this earth realm, not in this material plane, but beyond here in the spiritual realms. So when I say massive war, don't start thinking, oh, Russia and Ukraine are not, not, not even close to what I'm talking about. Not even close. I'm talking about out of these bodies. And uh, I, can, I can guarantee one thing. Usually I don't do this because there's so many doubters here that will say, well, prove it. How am I supposed to prove it before I've done it? How about I put it this way? I promise you, I promise you when I get out of this body that I'm going to start a massive war. 
Okay, how about that? And uh, things are going to change because I have the awareness of what this place is and what has to be done. And I will do anything to do it. I don't just want freedom and just get out of here and fly away or, you know, go far away and leave it this way. It's not good enough. I would never just leave it this way. For innocence here to suffer, never, never. This has to end. I also want to address something really quickly. Angel of Farts has said on video, Oh, what's he going to do? The sanity machine says he's going to seal this place in and seal everyone in. I've never said everyone. Said I'm going to seal the demons in here. Absolutely, the demons. Never said everyone. Then she says, What's he going to do? Get a cement truck and seal the exit? Like, I'm sorry, I don't know if she's special needs, and if she is, I don't want to make fun of her, even though she's made, I don't know how many, comments about me for months and months, and videos about me, and everything else, which is fine. You know, go go for it, lady. But as I said, I don't know if she's special needs. She chomps on her gum, and um, um, uh, 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 and sometimes she talks for like two minutes without even spitting anything out and making any sense. So, no, I'm not going to get a cement truck. Cement truck lady but i'll seal this place up more than uh the evil entities have they've already put some type of force field grid whatever you want to call it net around this place so maybe you just lack all imagination and maybe your ego's out of control you think that you're far far more brighter than you actually are she's the one that said on video that she's she has ideas to write the greatest stories ever written the great, I mean, why don't you show it? Why don't you do it? And it's always this running theme with these YouTubers, just like Angry Gingy said, I will make the greatest podcast of all time, he said. Well, where is it? Where is it? You know, just like Lion Sword claims to be better than everyone, they're all narcissists. They're all narcissists. They're grandiose narcs with delusions of grandeur. You know, they look like a, a steaming pile of shit to me. That's what they look like. But they talk like they're the greatest, and they call themselves the greatest. They overestimate themselves, which is what narcs do, and they underestimate everyone else, including their foes. Okay? Which is fine by me. I hope they do underestimate me. But I'm starting a war once I get out of this body. Okay? You can write that down. You can mark that down. You can... Put it on your calendar. You can grab a pen and write that on your calendar. Oh, Stephen said on this day that he's going to start a war in the spiritual realms one day once he's out of here. Go ahead. I don't care if that's, that's publicly known. Think about it. Remember it. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm so sick of this realm that no words would ever come close to expressing it. What I have witnessed here. This has to fucking end. It has to. But ultimately, at the end, an armistice resolution was reached. And then there was an agreement made that both opposing sides, uh, for a period of time at least, that there would be a truce. However, those that were wanted to protect this planet, to prevent uh, the, the group that looked at this place with envy, lost. They were unable to prevent the outside force. And there was a sense of something was given up. And what was given up was, part of what was given up in this massive war was Earth. And so this is why we think that it was a much larger conflict that just had to do with the Steven solar system. And there was a treaty that was signed and it was like, okay, well, we'll give you this, but you can't touch any of this other stuff over here. And there's an agreement. Part of that agreement, part of that signage, if you will, on that treaty was they signed over their protection or whatever it was that they their right to keep earth the way it had been previously to the way we know it now they signed it over to okay you can take earth to this outside party that looked upon it with envy and but ultimately the reason it came about was conquest is that there was conquest by an external third party that came in through 
domination brought about what exists here today. The fourth piece of contextual information that the project of Moksha was able to describe was how does one achieve Moksha? And while this specific aspect was not something we went too deep into, even though, I mean, Moksha is the liberation from this. A lot of the, because of the way that a topical remote viewing search is set up is, is it tries to get as much information or surrounding the idea. And so we could have just completely focused directly on, okay, well, how does one achieve Moksha? But uh, uh, we got a lot more information than just that. But the information we did get, it shows a couple different things. First of all, it shows that upon death, that the particles, we, again, we're using our vocabulary that the viewers have, uh, whether it's actually this, it may be something else, it's the closest in the vocabulary that we can use to describe it, is that particles like cosmic dust or dark matter, something strange, a strange type of particle that we don't have a description for, uh, creates, becomes charged and creates an emission. It's launched out of the individual very, very quickly, like a cannonball out of a cannon uh, or a bullet out of a gun. And that from, this occurs from the center of the individual's being, the central nervous. So it comes out of the central nervous system. In other remote viewing data, you actually can see this, is that if you do an event recreation or remote viewing and you do uh, the exact moment of death, across the board in almost all of those remote viewing sessions, you see a spiral, something is spiraling right out of the top of the head of the individual from the in their internal system. And when you look at that, a massive amount of energy is being expulsed. And uh, what's being described in this session is that that is essentially what the soul is. That is the release of the intelligence of the mind from the body, from the physical. And it's being sent to a place that is described as a tangled mess of or a super highway for the soul. But as the previous contextual information was showing is, is that there is a mechanical object around Earth that prevents the soul from reaching this highway. It seems like if you're able to reach the super highway, you can go pretty much anywhere you want. Achieving moksha gives you access to this super highway. And where those lead, your guess is as good as anyone else's, I suppose, at this point. But for this to work properly, to actually achieve moksha, is that the position and the angle with which you exit your body is very, very important. And the concept of in the work is that it brought up the idea of how the Egyptians used in, to evoke an out-of-body experience and how the angle with which the body was actually even laying was considered important to the Egyptians. And in the remote viewing work, it described that this, this 45 degree angle was a key element. And so it's as the body dies, the soul needs to exit at a correct angle, lest it be trapped within the system again, and then is refracted back and then lends back again into another body. Second piece of information that was obtained on how one achieves moksha is that it shows it as a blissful moment but that in okay i don't know if there's validity to the angle of the body but i do know that certain freemasons and knights of malta and dark occultists will have a coffin tilted at an angle including priests okay um i know it's weird but they will do that so that could be related, could be part of this, and uh, th their beliefs do go back to ancient Egypt and ancient Babylon, Samaria. You know what I'm saying? They they go all the way back. They go way back before ancient Rome, which may not even be ancient. It might not be as ancient times as people believe. It might not be 2,000 plus years ago. It could be you know, it might be centuries ago, for all we know. It might be less less than a thousand years ago, let's say. Um, they fucked with the history, and they fucked with the timelines and stuff like that. Um, they don't give us correct information, all right, people? They, they don't give you the correct information in the history books and history class in school. unseen actor 
unfolds something like a safety rope here. And there's a mechanism, the mechanism or the device that has held this group of people hostage in a cell is, again, it's describing this broken record where they've skipped again and again and again, is that there's something like a safety rope that if you exit at a right angle, is that there's a group waiting for you to help you the rest of the way out. I would assume, at least we would assume, that it's probably the group that used to be in charge of this particular space or in charge of this environment around Earth as far as death is concerned, but then had to give it up for what they deemed a greater good during the treaty or the armistice. And so, but they're there that if you can meet them at a certain point, they can help you out the rest of the way. The energetics leaving the body, though, is that there's a great... Jump in here. Personally, I'm not going to accept any or trust anyone, any beings, um, even if they come at me like, and they say we're here to help or whatever. I'm going to be highly, highly, highly suspicious of whatever entities, whatever beings I meet. Um, I, I assume otherwise. I don't assume anything is going to be there sincerely there to help me based on my experiences what i've seen what i've studied everything else um i just there's so many deceivers and uh i'm not going to trust anything that's my personal uh my personal view and uh you can do what you want it's up to you but i'm sharing with you what my mindset is them at a certain point, they can help you out the rest of the way. The energetics leaving the body, though, is that there's a great deal of fear that's associated with this, again, because of the reincarnation process, because you don't have any of the memory that's associated with what's going on. It's all seemingly brand new to you. And so the fear of this seems to be something that uh, prevents most people from ever getting that. And instead, they get trapped up into the system or the device that there'll be more work. Um, I'm laterally thinking here, but I don't want to get too off topic. Another YouTube video, which I'm going to discuss is the most significant remote viewing target. And uh, it's going to talk a little bit about this because it's very, very important. And it has to do with not going into the light when you die. <laughs> but I'm not going to go too far down that road. But it seems that because of the fear from when you die that and needing to exit at a certain angle to find that kind of safety rope where someone's there waiting for you to help you get the rest of the way out uh, prevents most people from actually reaching it. The end of this procedure is something, the way we describe it is it's like you've had a vice on your head for a very, very long period of time. And this vice has gone all the way down into your brain, into your mind. There's cords and cables. You didn't even realize that was occurring. That's cr created this environment for you to repeat these lives over and over again. And that the freedom from Longshaw is this device is being ripped off and taken off the top of your head. And so, you know, the, the closest analogy to something like that is you could look at the movie The Matrix when Neo wakes up and all the cords are pulled out of his back is that that's what we describe when you obtain moksha. That's, in this essence, in the human vocabulary, what is occurring. And uh, the drawing is something in your head is being ripped off and is being pulled off violently. Uh, that's, being, that's kept you here in the first place. Ultimately, though, it just seems the key aspects is the angle with which you exit the body is very important. Uh, finding the rope that of those who help you out the rest of the way seems to be important. But then also the fear of the entire situation seems to be kind of a condemning factor that because of that fear, because of that unknown, souls tend to go into a place that leads them back here in another life, uh, which is something I'll talk about in a future video that we kind of get more information on on a different remote viewing project. Okay, I would, I would emphasize instead of the angle, personally, this is my view, I would psych yourself up not just seconds before you're passing on, but a while, like start now is what I'm saying, but almost like daily affirmations, like 
I am sovereign, I am strong, I am powerful, I am a magical, divine, eternal being. Instead of focusing on, quote, fear of death, focus on your own power, sovereignty, and, and saying, I will be free. Um, I am free, I am meant to be free, I am a divine being, I'm a magical, eternal being, stuff like that, right? Have these, these thoughts go through your mind, Say them out loud sometimes. Type them on YouTube. Say them, okay? You're free to say that to me in comments. I'm not kidding about this at all. You're free to say to me in a comment when we're exchanging comments and you can reply and say, um, hey, Stephen, and uh, wh whatever you think of what I wrote. And then at, you can end your comments saying something like, I am a divine, sovereign, eternal being, or whatever way you want to put it whatever way you're comfortable with. This stuff works, okay? It works. It's not just convincing yourself or it's, and it isn't faking it till you make it. It isn't that. It's, it's like affirming what you are, what you already are, what you really are. And remembering, it's also remembering. It's remembering and affirming and it's empowering yourself. And that's what I want. I want people on my channel to empower themselves. Okay, that's what I want. So that you're just fearless when you leave here. You're just a fucking warrior. You're not, you're going to, you know, if you have to destroy things that get in your way when you're getting out of here, you'll do that. That's what I want. Okay. That's what I want for you. That's what I'm saying. That's what I want for you. So the next bit of contextual information that we were able to obtain with the project is it was to answer why was the system created in the first place. And this remote viewing data points to the system on Earth and that it's just one tiny component in a much larger system. It's, it's minuscule. It's a much, much larger operation. And it describes that we are part of a funnel and it's a sloth or a state of moral degradation or spiritual dejection in a manner, and that the system encircles us and that its proponents have cast a wide net, not just here on this planet. And the advocates or the torchbearers of this system, they, whether or not it's exactly these things against the viewer's vocabulary, I re always I really have to stress this, so it's like this, but uh, those who advocate and perpetuate this system the closest vocabulary in the viewer's own words is that these things are like demons. And so they're not real wonderful things. Again, the previous work of like, well, what's feeding on the intelligence during this extraction process that then fractures the individual, uh, the soul, and then sends them back as something parasitic, something that's twisted and warped. Uh, but it, the work describes that they have put man in this cage, the mind in this cage, and that wars of men, anarchy, destruction, societal overthrows, cyclical revolutions that occur down here, all fuel the system that actually keeps us entrapped. And so the unstable, this goes back to and reinforces the idea of the alchemical process of this all, of the stew that's created down here, the uncertainty, the mayhem, because there's, there's just far too many people here on this planet, is that that's intended because it creates the, the chaos that feeds. It's beyond just, quote, too many people. There's a fairly sizable, whether it's 10% or more, of the population that are narcissists and psychopaths, or both, combined. So that's a big part of it. And they also rule the governments, the royal families. They control the central banks. They control the wealth. They control the militaries. They have control of this realm and they are psychos and they work with the entities so that is a big part of it here and i also want to say this is that i've been saying since the start of my channel that team evil is united and now people are seeing it even people that don't personally like me i've seen comments on other channels saying the sanity machine has been 100 percent right about these youtubers he's calling them out he's exposing them he's right in what he's talking about 
he's speaking the truth about this one, that one, and they see it. Okay, they see that I'm exposing Team Evil on YouTube, and they're all a gang. They all know each other. They stick together. They read from the same script. They agree with each other. They don't disagree on anything major. They don't disagree on it. They're in agreement. They're a united front, Team Evil, on YouTube. And it's beyond YouTube, obviously. It's not just on YouTube. But I don't know what people expect. I've gotten some dumb comments lately, like, are you going to take on the Rothschilds and Roth, uh, Rockefellers and these ones and that ones? Well, maybe when I'm outside of this body, but do you think I can do it while I'm here? Like, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? I'm doing all that I can to even fight. And have you, like these people that leave those comments, have you even been helping me out with what I'm already doing? Have you been helping out? The ones that leave those comments, they show up on my channel like, oh, you're just taking on these easy YouTubers. You know, I've, I've been taking them all on, one person, taking on all these channels, exposing them all, enduring attacks by you know, all kinds of shit, threats, attacks, threats of violence, uh, you know, them reporting me to YouTube, you name it, everything, slandering me, smear campaigns, you name it. They've been going on for months and months and months and months. You haven't gone through that. These ones that say, are you going to do this? You're going to do that. Like maybe you're on Team Evil for all I know. I, I go through hundreds coming to my channel that started a, a, a fake YouTube account that day. They signed up and they post comments. Hundreds. I've had to ban like that. People don't even realize what I've had to go through to try to get the truth out. I'm not bitching about it. Just saying, that's the way it is. And I'm preparing for real battle once I get out of here. So the ones that think by saying stupid shit that I'm not going to seal the demons in, that has motivated me a million fucking times more to seal the demons in here. So what you're doing is backfiring. Get used to this place. To the demons, get used to this place. This is where you belong. This is where you're going to fucking stay. Right here in this hell realm. The demons are going to be sealed in here. If it's the last thing that I ever do, if I die, have to die trying, I, I, I'm aware that my soul is eternal. They can't destroy me. I'm not afraid of that at all. But I'm just saying, you know, as a thought experiment or, you know, hypothetically, whatever way you want to put it, right? No matter what, have emboldened me millions of times more than six months ago when I began this. So good job. Good job, demons. Good job. You just motivated me even more, more than you could ever imagine that this is where you belong. So keep talking. Keep talking. Your fate is sealed. ...leads into the system that powers it. And so when pinpointing and remote viewing work, the energetic activity that's occurring uh, when, when a soul dies, it gets caught up in the system and then it's sent back. It appears that a part of them is shipped off and then carried off somewhere else. And so it's extracted then because the honey that's been taken from the bees. Uh, and when you view this space, uh, you get, it's a very, you get a couple, you, first you get the sound and you get voices and it's just there's many many voices that are kind of caught in this system and it's a drowning out sound it's all incoherent talk that's when you're describing this it's, it's a limbo state that's occurring and these aspects that are chipped off are described as ghosts so chipped off of the soul they're described as ghosts and they're shells of what they used to be these are aspects of the soul that have been drained up and used and an overwhelming melancholy and sadness is associated with these remnants. This is what's split apart and fractured off when the soul becomes enslaved. They're bundled up like a collection of twigs and they're used as kindling. The viewer described it as just a massive amount of injustice. The purpose why the system was created is that it acts as what's being chipped off every time someone reincarnates, what's being taken is being used as kindling. It's a type of fuel that feeds a different system that doesn't have anything to do with here. So we're in a way part of a, an engine of one tiny piece or one engine that feeds back into a power plant. Yes, yeah, part of a larger system. 
And I want to say something else while it's on my mind. Some people have said, Stephen, you must be an old soul. I am eternal. That doesn't mean old. It means no beginning, no end. Okay, no starting point, no ending point. I always was, I forever will be. But there's a possibility that it's the opposite. This might seem counterintuitive to some that don't know what I mean, but I'll explain it briefly. I think that this might be my first or second trip here in a body in this realm. I don't think I've been here thousands of times because I think I'd be degraded if I was. I think the ones that are the most degraded have been here a long, long time and they haven't gotten out. So I think that possibly the reason I have consciousness, I have whatever talents, abilities, gifts, what I don't really call them gifts because nothing gave them to me. They're from within me. It's the way I look at it these days. Um, whatever I have and what I, whatever I am has not been degraded. So I'm able to see through this system, potentially because this is my first, quote, lifetime here, first incarnation, whatever way you want to put it, first, second, third, let's say, but very few. I would say three or less. That's what I think. Might even be my first time here. But I know as a young boy, I thought to myself, and I have early, early childhood memories, talking about before I could walk. And then as a toddler, when I was just beginning to walk, soon after, months after I could walk, thinking, I'm not from here. I'm in the wrong place. I don't belong here. This is not my home. This is not my home. Talking about as a young boy, I knew this was wrong. And I knew this realm was wrong. The way it works. The way it works. Not just bad people. The way it works. I want to really drive that point home to people. It's not just because there's bad people here, or bad creatures, or demons, or evil. It's the way this place works that's wrong. The design of it is wrong. So the purpose of the system is kind of analogous to we're on a railway system. And that railway system, which is a railway of conquest, outer expansion requires energy. It requires oil or grease to pad the railway to continue the constant outer expansion. And that without this energy would be unable to do so. And so it, it needs oil to burn to travel across these large, massive expanses. But it's more than that, too, because it's not just the traveling that requires the energy input or even the conquest, but it's also what is creating a space or an environment for those that are in charge of this operation to pop in and out anywhere they want along this line, along this chain. And so ultimately, though, all these roads, if you will, lead back to Rome. There's like a central one that exists in that this energy is empowering this massive system. For a second, when people say to you, you can't, how do I know that you can do this? What, where's your evidence? What are you gonna, like, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna do it? How, why should we believe that you're gonna do it? You can't, you can't, you can't. Just think to yourself, you don't have to justify yourself to them. Just think to yourself, I will. When they say you can't, think to yourself, I will, I will. And there's a lot of us that are introverted, that are, you know, almost like hermits. We can be reclusive. We can be isolated. We want to stay away from the masses. We're just sick of being drained by them, the followers that follow everything. And they run to the authorities and they follow everything. They, they cover their faces. and They do everything that they're told. I don't want to be around them anymore. And I haven't since the scamdemic, to be honest, you know. That didn't, quote, wake me up. I knew I was talking about zombies and writing about them in published writings in the 1990s, and I'm not kidding you. I've seen this for a long time. I didn't see the scamdemic and go, oh my God, the masses are full of zombies. It wasn't a great awakening for me. It just wasn't, you know, it just wasn't. I was talking about zombies on the day of nine, pause, pause, one, pause, pause, one. That day, in, conspir in a conspiracy chat room on the internet, I was in a chat, 
when people were announcing that happened, okay? I wasn't asleep when that happened. I didn't wake up yesterday. And that's what some people that show up on my channel, they just can't fathom it because they project. They think to themselves, well, I just woke up in the last three years. Surely the sanity machine, no, I didn't just wake up. You got to get beyond that, measuring everyone else by you, or you're going to be stuck here. That's what I think. I think that'll hold you to this realm. You want to view things that way, that nobody could be awake longer than you or see things, some, go ahead, have that mentality, but I think it just basically is like an anchor to this realm. It's, it's like an ego anchor to this fucking place. If I were you, I would, adv I would advise getting beyond that and drop that shit. It's stupidity. It really is. And it's what the shill channels do. That's what they always do. They push that kind of shit. They'll try to convince you that I'm stupid. And anybody that believes that is one of the biggest jokes on here. Have to be a zombie to believe that. The final bit of contextual information that was collected with the remote viewing project was who's responsible. Well, you can, some of the information kind of came out previously about the torch bears, about the parasitic type of things that seem to be running it here at least. Uh, but what agency is responsible for this? Who, who are the proponents of this conquest? Uh, you know, we describe it as like a World War II supply line. Who is the one leading the forces? And uh, we are able to describe these individuals, where they are, and uh, why they're essentially doing this. So we, I'm sure there's may, way more reasons than we're able to pick up or even possibly even comprehend. But simplistically, we're able to describe who these were, where they Okay, before I forget, um, just a second. Before I forget, I want to say something that mindset is very important, more so than most people believe. This whole thing might be mental and spiritual. That's how I look at it. So mindset is important because, and, and these shill channels will get, get you focused on the physical body, working out, hitting the gym, all this stuff. But your mindset, your mind, your mentality is important. Mind over matter. Because this whole thing might be a matrix AI run Maya illusion, right? So it's mind over fake matter, basically mind over matter so when people say what to practice or work on that's what i would be working on because that's going to be very helpful one day for me and for you hopefully mind over matter empower yourself strengthen your mind and your spirit that's the real work to do Want to go jack off a tree in the woods, though? I mean, that's, a, that's your choice if you want to do that and do, you know, focus on fighting and martial arts and, and all that kind of stuff or lifting weights, be a gym bro. and Go ahead. Go ahead. It's up to you. You can do that if you want to. why they're essentially doing this. So we, I'm sure there's may, way more reasons than we're able to pick up or even possibly even comprehend. But simplistically, we were able to describe who these were, where they were, and the general purpose. Those that are perpetuating this system is run by what we describe as a council of organic entities. And they exist and operate this from a location that is incredibly concentrated the gravity exists in such a way and matter exists in a state that freezes time. So you can think of it kind of as a bubble or a void zone or a black hole that they're existing within. And they're creating an artificial environment, an artificial timeless environment from which to exist in and then spread their influence out in a time reality in the universe. So essentially it's making them immortal. But they're doing this. Okay, I would, I would describe it differently, that the time here is the illusion, and outside of here it is timeless. So they're not creating a timeless bubble. 
They're creating a fake illusion here of time. This time is something that exists here in this fake matrix, this hell realm. That's what I think. I think it's the very opposite of what he just said. And once again, I don't care if there's people that say, oh, Stephen, you always disagree. You have to disagree with it. You know, disagreement is a part of being a critical thinker. I don't disagree just for the sake of disagreeing. I say what I truly think. If you want full-on agreement, go to the Shill channels with Team Evil. They're, they're like reading from a script. They all agree with each other on just about everything, on every fucking thing. Go ahead. If you're somebody that feels so uncomfortable with hearing critical thinking and disagreement, then maybe, maybe you belong there, okay? You're going to start crying tears in my comments of, oh, you disagree with everyone? That gets so fucking old, man. It really does. It's just tedious. And uh, it's annoying. It's just an annoyance. So, Anyway, that's the way I think. I don't think they're these super powerful beings. I don't think they're um, invulnerable. I think they can be defeated. And uh, that's my mindset. My mindset is not to feel like a loser before the battle begins. in a way that they spread throughout the universe through these various gateways and so they create these little void zones in various pockets in space in the universe there's one here in this specific solar system and this pocket is what allows them to pop in and out anywhere they want along this conquest okay i don't think this is a solar system i think that's false i don't believe in stephen hawking's black holes and gravity he mentioned i mean there's a bunch of stuff here that he mentions that's mainstream science that's pushed by the mainstream and i think it's all bogus i think all of it's bogus that all those things that i mentioned not this whole video so don't misconstrue it i said gravity and the solar system and black holes that stuff is mainstream bullshit science nasa style if you get what i'm saying bogus so I don't buy any of that stuff, okay? ...or along the supply line. They create these pockets, but they also live within them. And so it's almost like they've entered into a different dimension that doesn't have time, but they can come out anywhere they want along the, the supply line for it. Now the council themselves the words we use to describe them because of the system, because they may as well be mortal, because they don't age, is, is that they've created a system for them within physical reality that has set themselves up as gods, lowercase g, gods. And they view themselves as such as well, compared to all the other life forms, even over the souls. They view themselves as the gods of reality, and that that is what gives them the authority to do what they do, to increase expansion, that they have some sort of right to perpetuate their authority throughout the universe. The energy that is being funneled back to create the system is also being funneled back to them. And when we describe these beings, when we describe their nature, it's not very positive. Uh, we describe them as, simply put, evil is that these things are very service to self. It's about their own conquest. It's about taking the energy that exists in the universe, accumulating it, and then absorbing it for their own desires and to serve their own purposes. Oddly enough, I have to mention this, it matches up a lot with NDEs that talk about cancel, Council of Twelve, Council of Elders, uh, Council of uh, Ascended Masters, these different councils or whatever, different names or similar things, but um, they're not gods. It might even be AI projections. They seem very cold-hearted, but in another way they seem sadistic, so they could be beings. At this point, we could debate forever on that while we're in this realm, because we really can't prove conclusively either way that they're 
actual living beings or consciousness of some sort that's evil or, you know, demiurge demons or archons or AI holograms or whatever, right? has nothing to do with serving a greater good. It has nothing to do with uh, bringing harmony or peace to the universe. It has to do with conquest, war, and taking those spoils back to create a larger system of control, and they act as the mortal gods to this system. Now, one final thing uh, about when you remote view these specific entities is, and remember that these aren't, these use these are organic life forms so these were flesh and blood just like you and i but through their technology whatever you want to call it they created an environment for themselves that they are no longer biological they may as well not be because uh, they exist in this timeless reality with or without bodies we're not sure when we draw them we get we describe them with uh, eyes that are blazing white when you remote view them, they do notice you actually looking at them, but it's, it's rather irrelevant to them. Uh, in the session that I ran when it looked at these things, I was describing kind of the nature of this being. Uh, what can happen in remote viewing occasionally is you start in real time as you're remote viewing, describing the life form, noticing you. And so you're writing down information patterns of this thing, describing you, describing it. It's very, very strange. And so what happens when you look at these things that we're viewing, if that happens, is, well, at least for me, what occurred, it was like a gorilla noticing a gnat. It was, it was very dismissive. It was like, little mind, I don't have time for this. There's no, why would I even consider this little mind? I have much more important things, much more grand things to think about. And so it wasn't, it wasn't even really an interaction. It was just like a gorilla noticing a gnat and then ignoring it afterwards. And so it, it simply shows. I want to jump in here. Don't get discouraged by that. It could be a front by these beings. Arrogance, narcissism, similar to Team Evil on YouTube. I know it's not the exact same thing for the people that say, well, they're more powerful than these YouTubers, but it's the same type of thing is what I'm saying. It's very similar. All right? act very arrogant like oh dismissive like oh he can't touch us he can't do whatever he can you know we we could just do whatever and get rid of him or you know they act that way but is it reality is that the reality i don't think so i have my doubts they have to use a lot of tricks on us to keep us here so why is that if they're so powerful why do they need so many tricks so many lies so many illusions. If you can never get beyond the web or the the cage or the over the walls, what, why would they have to do that? Guards in a maximum security prison don't have to trick the inmate, inmates every day, all day long to make sure that they can't get out. They just rely on the actual physical security of the place. The bars, the doors, the locks, the walls, the fences, the weight, razor wire, they rely on all that right? They're not paid to trick the fucking inmates and pull tricks and illusions and try to fool them into staying there. So that's very revealing is what I'm saying. It's a big clue for those that are paying attention. Maybe that will hit some here that think all is hopeless and they're hopelessly stranded here. You might want to consider what I just said and think about it. Replay it. Listen to it a few times and think to yourself, wait a second, that makes sense. Well, always tries to appear to be more powerful. It's like somebody standing in front of a, let's say a moose or a grizzly bear or some large, <clears throat> excuse me, some large predator, a buck, you know, with the big horns big rack and they are fucking dangerous right they could kill you like easily in the wild so easily so you put your arms above your head and you've got like your 
let's say you have your big walking stick in your hand and you try to make yourself look as huge as possible, as tall and as big and as posing as, and you start yelling and you try to scare them off that way and you face them down and they turn and run. Are they stronger than you? Could they get rid of you? Yes. But you used intimidation. You frightened them off. Right? But physically, do you know what a grizzly... Have you seen the paw and the claws of a grizzly bear and what they could do to you and the power that they have and the size and the weight and the amount of the speed they have? They could chase you down. You can't outrun them. But you can scare them. They are when it terms of very loud sound and making yourself look big and scaring them, you can actually frighten them away. Okay? I don't advise it. I advise you to have bear spray and a, you know, sidearm on you. But, uh, yeah, that's the reality. And what I'm saying is, evil tends to work that way. They want you to believe that you have no chance, and that's false. They're liars deceivers that's the nature of evil from evil you should expect evil don't be surprised if you get evil from evil evil is always going to do what evil does so expect it shows I mean either whether it's the level of ego or whether it's the level of I mean, the truth to the situation that there are that these things operate in a place and on a plane of consciousness that so far surpasses what we are as humans on this physical plane. That's not even worth the time to even think about uh, who, us looking at them. That's not even a concern. But, uh, you know, these are things that they used to be physical, they used to be organic beings, but through technology, through consciousness technology, they figured out a way to set themselves up to live forever and so they don't die. And from that space, they have an outward expansion of conquest in the universe to perpetuate a system of control, to perpetuate a system of cages around planets that keep souls locked and trapped there so that every time they die, they have to go back. And then there's a cutting off or a fracturing off of that soul that then is collected into like a bundle of twigs to feed the system to power the operation and so we're essentially souls are being used as kindling is being used as coal for this system and that while there may be other reasons that we can the soul may uh, decide to jump into this system like maybe even willingly put themselves in this situation um, it's not a the soul on this planet is not one that doesn't come without extreme dangers because it seems that every time you die you lose there's a part of you that's lost and is fractured and so reaching moksha is a very significant and important thing um you know maybe the soul originally i'm just speculating here at this point you know your soul or my soul you know we came here to learn something but if you're stuck here for too long is that you become so fractured that the ultimate end of that is something that's like a ghost. It's something that's used up. It's something that uh, has lost its energetic potential. Not here to learn. You can't learn when you can't retain your knowledge from the past. When you have to learn, relearn again and again how to walk, how to tie your shoelaces, how to feed yourself. How to do every single thing. Read, speak, you know. Avoid making the same mistakes. You make like you can't learn when you can't remember. It doesn't work that way. This this is not a place for learning. This is a place where spirits get eaten. So for the ones that laugh and mock at my channel. I can't even describe how stupid that is. I mean, you're shooting yourself in the foot more than any way that I could ever describe it. One of the dumbest things you could do.
written, so based off some other work, which I'll be sharing in the future, I believe it's very important for people in, this, in their lifetime to be thinking about this type of thing, to be thinking about how do they attain moksha, how do they attain, I mean, first, is it in their highest good to do so right now is a very important aspect. You know, being able to have a dialogue with your higher self uh, is very important to, you know, is this the life where, att you know, attaining moksha or pursuing it? I am my higher self, okay? There's nothing higher than me spiritually i don't look up at anything there's nothing on a pedestal no rulers no masters nothing above and i'm also trying not to look down below and view things as below me i realize yes i do say zombies and stuff like that sometimes i realize that and i have felt sorry for them for you know decades and tried to help some of them but you know, at a certain point, it's like, I have to get myself out of here. Have to get myself out. Trying to help, that's why I spend so many hours doing this. Trying to reach as many people, as many thousands as I can and help you out. But I have to get myself out. And this place has to be ended from the outside of it. Not from within it. Can't beat the prison from within it. You got to get outside of it and then form an army you know, and I'll need, a, I'll, I'm probably going to need the help of others, obviously, but I will wait there outside of this place and we will fucking attack this whole thing and try to shut this thing down or destroy it or whatever we have to do, whatever system, main system, and get rid of this fucking thing. It has to be ended. It should not exist. And I realize what I'm saying here is very different than all these other channels that you've been on and, and arrived at from here. Very different. It is important. But um, I think that knowing that there is an outside group that while they may not be in charge of this particular space is there and waiting for people that figure out how to exit the body at the right angle figure out how to avoid the specific snares that exist for souls as they exit the body this, and this will be a topic for another my viewing video uh, on youtube which i'll talk about um, that there are those outside waiting they're there to drop a rope down into the cage to help you the rest of the way out if you do the first part. So that's Moksha. That's remote viewing work. That's describing the... Oh, I think they're waiting to deceive as you're dying. That's what I've witnessed. Entities arriving to deceive. Whether they're demons, as I've said, one of my loved ones said, stay away from me, get away from me, Lucifer to a being or an entity that was in her, in her final days trying to deceive, fool her, tempt her, whatever, to follow. That's what they do. And they also send fake loved ones where they look like your father, your mother, your deceased sister, deceased brother, deceased pets. That's what they do, your deceased grandmother. So be prepared for all of that. This is basic stuff. I am going to get much deeper, though, with my channel as time goes on. Some people want it all at once. They want it. I, I don't know what they expect. Do they expect a two-minute video explaining what to do? I mean, this is a deep topic. I, I, I don't know what these people are thinking. I don't get it. They think that it's three-step instructions on how to get out. You're in a very fucking evil, tricky, complicated, complex realm here. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you, there, you know, you're up against... Uh, an enemy that's not stupid or simple. Freedom from the cycle of reincarnation, uh, contextual information about why it's occurring, how it's occurring, and who's doing this. And I think it gives a little bit of perspective that there's a much larger game that's being played here and earth is just one tiny part of it 
and we are not the center of the universe. We are just one tiny aspect on a very large board that uh, seems to go back and be funneling into a system of fight, if you will, on a cosmic scale of the fight between good and evil. And yeah, I do agree with the fight between good and evil. I do think that's a huge aspect to this, but I think it's disempowering, sorry, when they say uh, Earth is just tiny, it just seems like more NASA shit, mainstream, we're just a tiny speck in a huge universe and all that stuff. If I have to destroy once I'm outside of this matrix, this whole thing, and this whole, quote, universe, and end it, I'll do that. I don't hear the chill channel saying that, so you can, some of you, like, there's some that are new here that say, well, Forever Conscious, or this channel, or that one is saying that. No, Nobody that I've heard is saying the same thing. Wayne Bush, none of them, okay? If I have to, you don't know how far I'll go. People, as usual, underestimates the lengths that good will do to stop them. They really do. They think that it's a wrap. Go ahead and think that evil. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. They don't know how hard I'll fight and what I'm capable of and what I'm willing to do to make sure that this is put to an end. As it should be, as it has to be. It has to be. And that's the mindset I want people to have. I can't make you think that way. But I hope one day that you do, if you don't already. I hope one day you're like, you know what? It really does have to. It's sicker than sick. It's, it's more evil and sadistic than you can imagine. You'll have to spend years looking into the depths of the evil that I've already looked into here, perhaps, to see it. And be like, you know what, Stephen? Now I really see it. Now I really see what this place is. And I agree with you. I hope you get there. I really do. I hope you get there to that point before you leave here. Because then you'll be on my side, fighting this. And making sure that this is put to a fucking end. Our pocket of the universe is one that appears to be controlled by the negative side. Its authority, it has its system, exerts power and control over this specific pocket in a way that keeps people entrapped here, enslaved here. And so... The okay, so this realm is a matrix. It's like a pocket. It does enslave people here. But he's said nothing about... Oh, there could be realms of tremendous beauty, wholesome places, beautiful, uh, peaceful, tranquil, you know, everything that you, you would desire, like the weight of this place is immense on someone's mind, someone's spirit, someone's heart. They might be completely different. They might be loving and beautiful and peaceful and tranquil and uh, just amazing, just fantastical places beyond here, outside of here. I hardly ever hear people describe that or say, you know, that's a big possibility. We might have some amazing things to look forward to, to not just hang our heads in despair and be like, oh, fuck, and be down all the time. In other words, there's reason to hope. Always reason to hope. Not hopium, but real hope. Real hope. And there's reason to fight for what's good and what's the right thing to do. These ideas that you may have read about in the past of Prison Planet seem to fit is that it fits the, now the reasons for it don't seem to match up a lot of the other things that I've read about why this has occurred, uh, but, or who's doing it. The remote viewing data very clearly kind of points to that idea that souls become entrapped here and then they are harvested 
here again and again like bees for honey and until the individual figures out how to escape the system which the out-of-body experience being able to determine where you exit from after death is a key role and then also overcoming the fear of exiting it seems to be a key role and then looking for that rope that's dropped down for you and really using a discerning eye i think in that that state of life after death and that soul state afterwards seems to to be important as well so that'll conclude the remote viewing video on moksha and if you enjoyed this video please definitely hit a like and if you're not subscribed already hit the subscribe subscribe button on the channel uh if you want to see more of this content you can always support me okay i wouldn't be relying on a rope or others and just relying on that i wouldn't i wouldn't do it i also want to wrap this up pretty soon and i want to say that your physical body could be fucked up you could be in a wheelchair here you could be a special needs person here but they could be very powerful spiritually their body might not be in this realm, but out of their body, they could be very, very powerful spiritually. A very good spirit and very powerful spiritually. I want them on my team when we're out of here. So I don't write them off because they're not a gym bro. And that seems to be the big thing going around with Darius and Derek and others. You know, just... Uh, Focus on the physical shit, money, your body, your gym, get your money right. Do all the, it's all physical shit. I'm focused more on the spiritual and being a spiritual warrior, a spiritual seeker of freedom, seeker of truth, and uh, a spiritual warrior devoted to ending this fucking thing, this matrix, this sewer matrix. That's what I'm focused on. I don't think it's all uh, rainbows and, and milk and honey and unicorns and, uh, you know, unconditional love on the other side, the other side. I think that's just the astral realm and part of the matrix. That's what I think it is. Different levels within this matrix. And I think uh, Darius is duped, and I think he's duping many, many others, thousands. There's lots like him on YouTube, lots of them. You know, the 5D ones, there's, if you add up all the thousands that are following this shit, you think about it, it's just, it's really sad because it's a lot, a lot of people that are falling for that shit. Me through my Patreon page, which is just Patreon forward slash remote viewing. Okay, so he's got a Patreon, so of course that's, uh, Never a good sign. Um, I didn't even know that was there till right now. As I mentioned earlier, I never saw this far into the video, so I should have started right there, maybe at 8.40, but... Uh... I'm going to wrap this up. I think I've said just about everything that I want to say here. Just taking a quick glance here, and I usually do this. Escape velocity, that's another thing that's being pushed. The escape angle, when you leave your body, go out of body, and the escape velocity. I think that's a, is that a Bob Monroe concept or someone else that says you got to reach escape velocity to get out of this matrix? I don't know about that. I think it's not a physical thing, like physical speed, physical angle. I think it's more mental and spiritual and uh, consciousness-based and spirit-based rather than that stuff. That's what I think. But you can think what you want. Angle at which you exit your body. Really? You have to sit up? What, what happens if you drown? What happens? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could think of different scenarios where that angle is just, it's not going to be possible for you to put yourself into that 45 degree angle. Or sorry, 45% angle. <laughs> but if he put percent instead of the degree, 45% angle. <laughs> oh man. It's like a bad movie. Yeah, well this whole realm is not just what he said. This whole fucking matrix, this whole realm is.
like a nightmare Twilight Zone episode on steroids and uh, PCP and crack and acid and whatever else you can throw in there. It's just fucking mess, you know, this place. So it's the way it is. And uh, a lot of people doubt the truth and a lot of people that doubt the truth love to latch on to lies and cling to them like it's their lifeline. They cling to lies with a death grip and they attack any truth speakers and messengers of truth. That's this realm also. I've dealt with that my whole life. Going back, into, uh, as far as back as I can remember, it's been that way. And it's just gotten worse in recent years. In the last five, ten years, it's way worse than it was. Way worse. It's just hyped up now. It's way worse. It's amped up, I meant. Way worse. It's way worse now. I'm not trying to, you know, I just want out of this place. And I'm going to get out of this place. That's what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Have a good night. Bye.